Good day, everyone. I am Ronald, the moderator for this webinar. I welcome everyone to today's webinar that will be on prepare for 2025 ICD-10 CM codes updates. I want to introduce our presenter for today. That is Dorothy Steed. Dorothy D. Steed, MSLD, CCS, CDIP, COC, CPCO, CPUM, CPUR, CPHM, CPMA, ACSOP, CCP, RCC, RMC, CEMC, CPCI, CFPC, PCS, FCS, CRCR, CICA, CPAR. Dorothy Steed is an independent healthcare consultant and educator. She has served as a Medicare specialist and a physician audit supervisor for hospital systems with 47 years of experience in healthcare. I would now like to hand over the floor to the speaker. Over to you, Dorothy. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today uh, in, in today's presentation. Um, we do have a good number of changes uh, coming up for ICD-10 in 2025. Uh, and so we'll start today with some changes to the guidelines. We don't have much, but we do have a few. Um, sepsis has been in the news quite a bit in the healthcare arena. And so there's um, several uh, new uh, issues to consider when you have a septic patient. But if the patient's encounter is chiefly for the administration of chemotherapy, immunotherapy, or uh, radiation, then you'll start with your principle as Z51.0. Now, you we will see quite a number of changes in the arena of lymphoma. So let's uh, take a look at this uh, pretty long list um, of codes there. We've got, uh, we're going to see uh, this breakdown between Hodgkin's lymphoma that will be in the C81 through C84 category. Now, in the diseases of blood and blood forming organs, and we've got one new code in this chapter that is D61.03 for Fanconi anemia. Uh, we have new codes that are in the arena of uh, diabetes. What you'll see new is diabetes that is due to an underlying condition. This is going to be in the uh, E08 and E09 categories. Now, still in the metabolic chapter 4 section, we've got codes here that are going to be very, very specific. We still are in the endocrine section, chapter four, and we've got uh, codes in the E34 category. Now, we've got some new things in regards to obesity. So, is it class one, class two, class three? Some additional um, things in this chapter four. Now, that was it for chapter four. Now, in chapter five, in the mental and neurodevelopment disorders, we do have a lot of new codes that are going to have to do uh, with patients' dietary situations that are connected to uh, some type of um, disorder in this category. Now, we have a good many more things in regards to anorexia, more related to the eating disorders. Now, they uh, binge eaters. Uh, and is in this one there is also going to be tied to the number of episodes per week. We're still in Chapter 5, and we have uh, new codes that have to do with avoiding a restricted food intake disorder. Now, moving on to Chapter 6 uh, of Diseases of the Nervous System, we've got some new codes that are going to be applicable to epilepsy. 
and so those will be in the G40.8 category. Now you will see uh, we have a lot still in chapter 6, still in the nervous system. We've got some new codes related to developmental and epileptic encephalopathy. We didn't have anything in particular in Chapter 7 and 8, but in Chapter 9, we do have some new codes that are related to diseases of the circulatory system. So we have um, I-16.1, Hypertensive Emergency, uh, moving on to Chapter 10 uh, in Respiratory. So we've got a um, good many new codes to look at here. Now, in Chapter 11, uh, Diseases of the Digestive System, we've got new codes in this category. More in the, uh, the anal fistula category uh, is it complex. Still in the digestive system, we've got uh, new codes for anorectal fistula, and is it simple? Uh, now we're moving into skin and subcutitia, chapter 12. We've got new codes in this uh, section. Now in the mus musculoskeletal and connective tissue, chapter 13, the same uh, circumstances are going to apply. We're going to look now at uh, synovitis and tenosynovitis. Now, we are still in the same discussion for the synovitis and tenosynovitis. We, now, we also have codes for the right ankle and foot or the left ankle and foot. Now, chapters 14, 15, and 16, uh, there was no real particular change there. But in the chapter 17, for congenital malformations, uh, deformations, and chromosomal abnormalities, we've got new codes here. These codes will start with Q. Now, we do have a number of new codes related to the external causes in Chapter 19. These codes will start with T. And they are having, they're related to poisoning or adverse effect or maybe underdosing. Still in the external cause section, we have new codes that will have to do with disruption or dehiscence of a wound closure. In chapter 21, we have many new codes that have to do with um, factors that influence the health. Now, this patient has uh, estrogen or other hormone and factors receptor status Z17. We also have um, still in the Z17 category that has to do with hormone receptor status. We're going to see uh, additional codes to be reported here. As we look at the social determinants of health, they continue to add uh, codes with explanations uh, to show how this patient's status in society is affecting their approach to health care. Still in this category, remember we've got uh, quite a few new Z codes as they look at ways explain why a patient may not seek help uh, in other uh, factors that uh, influence them. Some new codes that have to do with personal history of colon polyps. Now that is the extent of what we have just for the CM. Now uh, I know it's a lot to document. Physicians um, get in a hurry. They don't want to document the uh, specifics but the coder cannot use these new codes effectively if they don't have the documentation to show that. So you want to make sure before October the 1st that whoever your EHR vendor is has added these new codes so they can be used appropriately. So that's... Uh, for this particular category of the diagnosis codes, uh, these are the big change that you're going to see. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I appreciate your attention. I know that there's a lot 
uh, especially in several of the categories. There are a lot of new codes, particularly with uh, lymphoma, with eating disorders, with uh, social determinants of health issues. Uh, but remember that effective uh, with your discharge dates of October the 1st, these new codes will be expected to be used. Remember that payers are increasing their activity all the time, and uh, you want to make sure that you don't get your reimbursement delayed or denied because the new codes were not used effectively. So, again, thank you for joining today. Thank you, Dorothy. That concludes the session for today. Thank you, everyone, for participating. You may all disconnect now and have a great day. Thank you.